former president Olushagun Obasanjo has written another moving letter to President Muhammadu Buhari on the heels on the insecurity on the heels of the insecurity challenges ravaging the country. The former leader again in the letter asked the president to find lasting solutions to the escalating insecurity sweeping across the country. The letter reads thus, Dear President and General Buhari, I am constrained to write you this open letter. I decided to make it an open letter because the issue is very weighty and must be greatly worrisome to all concerned Nigerians. And that means all right-thinking Nigerians and those res resident in Nigeria. Since the issue is of momentous concern to all well-meaning and all right-thinking Nigerians, it must be of great concern to you. And collective thinking and dialoguing is the best way of finding an appropriate and adequate solution to the problem. The, letter, the contents of this letter, therefore, should be available to all those who can help in proffering effective solutions for the problem of insecurity in the land. One of the spin-offs and accelerants in, is the misinformation and disinformation through the use of fake news. A number of articles in recent days have been attributed to me by some people who, I believe, may be seeking added credence and an attentive audience for their opinions and viewpoints. As you know very well, I will always boldly own what I say and disown what is put into my mouth. But the issue I am addressing here is very serious. It is the issue of life and death for all of us and for our dear country, Nigeria. This issue can no longer be ignored, treated with nonchalance, swept under the carpet, or treated with coddling gloves. The issue is hitting at the foundation of our existence as Nigerians and fast eroding as Nigerians and fast eroding the roots of our Nigerian community. I am very much worried and afraid that we are on the precipice and dangerously reaching a tipping point where it may no longer be possible to hold danger at bay. Without being immodest, as a Nigerian who still bears the scar of the Nigerian Civil War on my body, and with a son who bears the scar of fighting the Boko Haram on his body, you can understand, I hope, why I am so concerned when people are desperate and feel that they cannot have confidence in the ability of government to provide security for their lives and properties. They will take recourse to anything and everything that can guarantee their security individually and collectively. For over 10 years, for four of which you have been the captain of the ship, Going to six years now, the Boko Haram has menacingly ravaged the land and in spite of government's claim of victory over the Boko Haram, the potency and the activities of the Boko Haram where they are active remain undiminished, putting lie to government's claims. The recent explanations of the chief of staff or chief of army staff for non-victory due to lack of commitment and lack of motivation on the part of troops, bordering on sabotage speaks for itself. Say what you will, Boko Haram is still a daily issue of insecurity for those who are victimized, killed, maimed, kidnapped, raped, sold into slavery and forced into marriage. And for children forcibly recruited into carrying bombs on them to detonate among crowds of people to cause maximum destructions and damage. And Boko Haram will not go away on the basis of sticks alone. 
carrot must overweigh sticks. How else do, we, do you deal with issues such as only about 50% literacy in Northeast with over 70% unemployment? Hetzman farmers' crisis and menans started with government treating the issue with, kidding, with cuddling gloves instead of hammer. It has festered and spread. Today, it has developed into banditry, kidnapping, armed robbery, and killing all over the country. The unfortunate situation is that the criminality is being perceived as a Fulani menace unleashed by Fulani elites in the different parts of the country. For a number of reasons, but even more unfortunately, many Nigerians and non-Nigerians who are friends of Nigeria attach vicarious responsibility to you as the Fulani, as a Fulani elite and the current captain of the Nigerian ship. Perception may be as potent as reality at times. Whatever may be the grievances of the Fulanese, if any, they need to be put out in the open and their grievances, if legitimate, be addressed. And if other ethnic groups have grievances, let them also be brought out in the open and addressed through debate and dialogue. The main issue, if I may dare say, is poor management and mismanagement of diversity, which on the other hand is one of our greatest and most important assets. As a result, very wondrous cloud is gathering, and rain of destruction, violence, disaster, and disunity can only be the outcome. Nothing should be taken for granted. The clock is ticking with the cacophony of dissatisfaction and disaffection everywhere in the outside, in and outside the country. The presidency and the Congress in the United States have signaled to us to put our house in order. The House of Lords in the UK had debated the Nigerian security situation. We must understand and appreciate the significant implications and likely consequences of such concerns and deliberations. No one can stop hate speech, violent agitation, and smothering violent agitation if he finds the embers of hatred, disaffection, and violence. It will continue to snowball until it is out of control. Its stitch in time saves nine, goes the old wise saying. With the death of many in the country, some sympathetic Nigerian groups are saying enough is enough. Professor Anya, a distinguished Nigerian merit laureate, has this to say. We can no longer say with certainty that we have a nation. Niger Delta leaders, Southeastern leaders, Middle Belt leaders, and Northern Elders Forum have all remained quiet. Different ordinary Nigerians at home and abroad are calling for different measures to address or ameliorate the situation. All the calls and cries can only continue to be ignored at the expense of Nigerian unity, if not its continued existence. To be explicit and without equivocation, Mr. President and General, I am deeply worried about four avoidable calamities. Abandoning Nigeria into the hands of criminals who are all being suspected, rightly or wrongly, as Fulanese and terrorists of Boko Haram type. So spontaneous and planned reprisal attacks against Fulanese, which may in, ad, inadvertently or advertently mushroom into pogrom or the Rwanda type genocide that we did not believe could happen, and yet it happened. Similar attacks against any other tribe or ethnic group anywhere in the country, initiated by rumors, fears, intimidation, and revenge capable of leading to pogrom. Violent uprising beginning from one section of the country and 
spreading quickly to other areas and leading to disembarment of the country. If we do not act now, one or all of these scenarios may not may happen. We must pray and take effective actions at the same time. The initiative is in the hands of the president of the nation, but he cannot do it alone. In my part of the world, if you are sharpening your cutlass and a madman comes from behind to take the cutlass from you, you need other people's assistance to have your cutlass back without being harmed. The madmen with serious criminal intent and terrorism as core value have taken cutlass of security. The need for assistance to regain control is obviously compelling and must be embraced now. A couple of weeks ago at a public lecture I had, I had said among other things that in all these issues of mobilization for national unity, stability, security, cooperation, development, growth and progress, there is no consensus. Like in the issue of security, government should open up discussion, debate, and dialogue as part of consultation at different levels. And the outcome of such deliberations should be collated to form inputs into a national conference to come up with a solution that will effectively deal with the issues. We need unity of purpose and nationally accepted strategic roadmap that will not change the whims and caprices of any government. It must be owned by the citizens, people's policy and strategy implemented by the government, no matter its color and leaning. Some of the groups that I will suggest to be contacted are traditional leaders, past heads of states, no matter how competent or incompetent they have been and how much they have contributed to the mess we are in. Past heads of paramilitary organizations, private sector, civil society, community leaders, particularly in the most affected areas, present and past governors, present and past local government leaders, present religious leaders, past head of states, past intelligence chiefs, past heads of civil service and relevant current and retired diplomats, members of opposition and any groups that may, deem, that may be deemed necessary and relevant. The president must be seen to be addressing this issue with utmost seriousness and with maximum dispatch and getting all hands on deck to help. If there is failure, the principal responsibility will be that of the president and no one else. We need cohesion and concentration of effort and maximum force, political, economic, social, psychological, and military to deal successfully with the menace of criminality and terrorism separately and together. Blame game among own forces must be avoided. It is debilitating and only helpful to our adversary. We cannot deter anymore it is time to confront this threat headlong and in a manner that is holistic, inclusive, and purposeful. For sake of Nigeria and Nigerians, I pray that God may grant you as our president the wisdom, the understanding, the political will, and the courage to do what is right when it is right and without fear or favor. May God save secure, protect, and bless Nigeria. May he open to us a window of opportunity that we can still use to prevent the worst happenings, as we say in my village. May God forbid bad thing. Olushagun Obasanjo. All right, guys, what are your thoughts concerning this particular open letter by the president, the former president of uh, Nigeria? Well, drop by at the comment section. Let's know what your thoughts are. Concerning this particular news story as it were, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe. Hit the bell icon so we can get notification whenever we pull, we pull, you can get notification whenever we post news stories. Thank you so much guys, I appreciate your support and I will see you on the other news. Thank you and bye for now.